unbelievable 117 yards and a back pedal just made it to the end zone i didn't like the ending but no. i sure like the start welcome to watch mojo and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times athletes and teams celebrated too early and the rebound of richardson still an opportunity with a minute to play and at the end he gets picked he gets picked by Marin Simon of Washington. And you just can't do this kind of stuff, Lewis. You can, and you go, you see his face. But you know what? Showboat later, will you please? He's not touched here, and so, hey, I made a great catch. Guess what? It's a live ball. Ridiculous. For this list, we're taking a look at instances where individual athletes or entire teams gave up on a play or game a little too early and watched in horror as the call and or game went in favor of their opponent. Which of these sports fails do you find the funniest? Let us know in the comments. And if you're dying for more sports content, be sure to check out Watch Mojo's new podcast, The Waterboys Podcast, available wherever you get your pods. Number 10, Patrick Waugh. Patrick Waugh, when he realized his mistake, went, I'm not sure I've ever done that before. This entry is proof that even Hall of Fame goaltenders make mistakes from time to time. Locked in a 0-0 game with bitter rivals Detroit in the 2002 Western Conference Finals, Patrick Waugh appeared to be a brick wall. In this sequence alone, he made a number of key saves. However, he wouldn't be on this list if that's all that had occurred. After making a particularly impressive save on Red Wings captain Steve Eiserman, Waugh lifted his glove hand in the air in celebration. Unfortunately, the puck popped out, and Brendan Shanahan was there to knock it into the back of the net. Patrick Waugh thought he had in his glove, and he did not. He did not. Detroit would go on to win the game, the series, and eventually the Stanley Cup. Number 9, Nick Young. Unlike our previous entry, this sports gaffe proved inconsequential to the final outcome of the game. However, we doubt Nick Young's teammates ever let him forget about the time he celebrated prematurely. During a 2014 game against the New York Knicks, Young made an embarrassing mistake when he celebrated a successful three-pointer that, uh, wasn't successful. The ball bounced off the rim and out, a fact Young missed because his back was to the play. Instead of waiting to see what happened, Young had turned away from the rim, throwing his arms in the air in an attempt to rouse the crowd. The Lakers won, but Nick Young was definitely the night's biggest loser. Number 8, Jun Jun Woo. Down two runs in the bottom of the ninth, the Lotte Giants of the Korean Baseball Organization found themselves in desperate need of some late game heroics. That's when Jun Jun Woo came up to bat. With a runner on second base, a home run would tie the game. So when Jun Woo smashed a deep fly ball into left field, he didn't wait to see what happened next. Instead, he flipped his bat high into the air and pointed to the crowd. It was only as he was slowly trotting to first base that he realized the ball had not cleared the fence and was instead safely nestled inside the glove of his opponent. Jun Wu was left standing on first completely stupefied. Number 7. Mark Martin Listen, man, I've been pulling for David Green to win really hard, but that's not, not like that. <laughs> That's the stupidest thing ever done. There's nothing else I can say. Remember how we said not all sports gaffes have serious consequences? Yeah, that wasn't the case with this next entry. At the 1994 Goodies 250 NASCAR series, driver Mark Martin had a clear path to victory. He'd been in first place for much of the race, but with two laps to go, the caution flag went up. The next thing Martin knew, the white flag was up, indicating the start of the final lap, and other drivers were congratulating him. Here comes Mark Martin. He's coming. What's he doing? Hello. He's coming down pit road. Wait a minute, Mark. The race is not over. Confused due to the multiple flags, Martin took it as a sign that the race was over. He subsequently pulled off the track and into pit row. This gave David Green the opportunity to overtake him and win the race. Talk about a bad way to lose. And David Green will get his second career Bush Grand National victory. And David's not taking any chances. He's going to run another lap just to make sure. Number six, Megan Rutledge. Inexperience and excitement rarely produce stellar results. 
Just ask motocross racer Megan Rutledge. Look at the dejection of Megan Rutledge. While competing in the 2013 X Games, Rutledge found herself in first place with the finish line in sight. Emboldened by her lead and the prospect of winning her first X Games race, Rutledge decided to add a little flair to one of her final jumps, but ended up crashing. I, I, whoa! She opened the door, went down, and Vicky Golden is going to take gold in Los Angeles over Rutledge. In response to her early celebration, Rutledge stated, I was out there leading. I'm really young. I've never led an X Games before. I celebrated a bit too early and made a mistake. The moment may have proved too big for the young racer, but it sounds like she learned her lesson. Number 5. Adriana Nelson Imagine you're a long-distance runner competing in your first marathon. And at one point, your lead is 30 seconds, and with 300 meters to go, you're ahead of the next closest runner by more than a dozen meters. What do you do? Start celebrating, of course. That's exactly what Adriana Nelson, formerly Portia, did at the 2007 Chicago Marathon, and it cost her big time. Portia oh, is no. waving. waving. Does she have any idea? Uh, she uh -oh. has no idea. Uh -oh. is already celebrating. Uh -oh. With record-setting temperatures slowing everyone down, Nelson managed to build a healthy lead. Unfortunately, she flew a little too close to the sun and began celebrating with people in the crowd as she approached the finish line. Oh and finally, Tertea realizes it too late. late. Oh my goodness, that was unbelievable. She Great finish by Berhan Adere. This gave defending champion Berhan Adere time to catch up, with Adere passing Nelson with just a few meters left to go in the race. What is going through Pratea's mind right now? Whoops. Whoops, I should have looked behind. Number four, Leon Lett. Former NFL defensive tackle Leon Lett was an important part of a Dallas Cowboys squad that won three Super Bowls in the 1990s. However, when people hear his name, their minds inevitably drift to this infamous moment from Super Bowl 27. Nearing the end of the game, Lett recovered a fumble and began chugging towards the end zone. However, he was unaware that speedy Buffalo receiver Don Beebe was hot on his tail as he was slowing down and raising the ball in the air. It's a 60-yard run! He's being chased by Beebe! Watch out! Did he get across? No, they are not! That's going to be a touchback to Buffalo! This gave Beebe the chance to knock it out of his hand and through the back of the end zone, causing a touchback. Luckily for Lett and the Cowboys, they were up by 35 points. So the only real harm was Celette's reputation. Leon came to the sideline and I said, man, what happened? He said he was watching the Jumbotron and he was trying to do Michael Irvin where he put the ball out across the goal line. And he did see Don Beebe. Number three, Sabona Zagret. Didn't anyone ever tell these guys it ain't over till it's over? In 2010, Croatian basketball squad Sabona Zagreb found themselves facing KK Partizan in the ABA League Finals. Down 72-71 in the final quarter, Bojan Bogdanovic nailed a three-pointer to put Sabona up by two points with just .6 seconds left on the clock. Sabona Zagreb players and coaches immediately ran onto the court to celebrate, but all this did was give KK Partizan a golden opportunity to get the ball up the court undefended and score the game-winning basket. Sabona lost 75-74 and learned a valuable lesson about playing to the final buzzer. Number 2. Khalid Askri Back in 2010, Far Rabat goalkeeper Khalid Askri found himself in a penalty shootout versus Mas Fez in the 2010 Moroccan Throne Cup. With the game on the line, Askri stared down the opposing player and made a key save to extend the shootout. He then stood up and began banging his chest in an attempt to rile up the crowd. Unfortunately for Askri, the ball continued to spin right into the back of the net. The goal proved costly as it gave Mas Fez a 7-6 lead and ultimately the win. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. The Philadelphia Phillies. Upon video review, it was determined they celebrated too early. All right, here we go. Here's the call. It may be a tempered celebration. He's out at home plate. Ricardo Russo. He forgot there was still one lap to go. 
No, he's punching the air. He's celebrating, I think. And I think this race is still going on here, and he hasn't realized. The Toronto Blue Jays. They partied like they won the World Series after clinching the division, but went on to lose to the Kansas City Royals in the playoffs. Left side. Moustakis. Royals win the pennant. Alex Cuyavante. Colombian skaters celebrated early, lost at the last second. Skyview High School. Sometimes knowing the rules is more important than making the big play. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Deshaun Jackson What is it with football players dropping the ball at the one-yard line? Unlike Leon Lett, this gaffe was 100% Deshaun Jackson's fault. After catching a deep ball from Eagles quarterback Donovan McNabb, Jackson zipped into the end zone and immediately began to celebrate. McNabb loading up deep for Deshaun Jackson. He held it in. Oh, wow. did he get over the goal line? Did he get over the goal line? Yes, he did. Touchdown. Turns out he kicked off the festivities a little too soon, dropping the football before entering the end zone. Watches very closely. He has secured the football. I saw it live and it didn't look right, and you just can't do that. While initially ruled a touchdown, video review quickly determined the ball never crossed the white line. After there. review, the runner lost control of the football prior to going into the end zone. By rule, the ball was around the Philadelphia on the one-yard line, first and goal. Luckily for Jackson, the ball was placed at the one-yard line, and the Eagles immediately punched it in for a score. Just a reminder, if you can't get enough sports, head over to your preferred podcasting app to check out Watch Mojo's Waterboys podcast. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.